Well, good morning, Grace Point. Uh, it's great to be with you like this. It's Sunday, March 15th, and so this is new. This is new for me. I know this is probably new for you. I'm not used to filming Sunday morning like this. So I'm just glad that we get a chance to come together like this uh, right there in your home and uh, spend this time together. We're going to do a couple things this morning. Uh, one is that we're going to work through uh, a psalm this morning uh, together, a psalm that I think is just really be great for what we're talking about today. And then also I just want to talk together about some opportunities for the days ahead. All right, so uh, to begin, let's uh, do what we say every single Sunday. Uh, let's get our Bibles open. So I say let's open our Bibles, please, and let's look at Psalm 46 this morning. Psalm 46, it's just a beautiful psalm. I think it's really helpful for a lot of what we're facing today. This psalm is called God is Our Fortress. So uh, uh, Psalm 47, let's get it open. This is a great time. Let's put our phones down. Let's turn the TV off and let's focus in on God's word and what it has to say for us this morning. So there's kind of three parts to this psalm. The first part is verse 1, 2, and 3. And I think, a, I think a helpful title for this little section is just simply, God's our refuge. God is our, he's our refuge. So let's check it out, verse 1 with me. Verse 1, it says this, it says, God is our refuge and strength. He's a very present help in trouble. That word, uh, very present help, is, it's a great word. It really means he is a, he's a well-proved help in time of trouble. He's well proved to kind of think about it, think to the past, uh, and even right up to the present today. What are the different ways that God has shown? He's really proved himself to be a refuge and a strength for you in times of trouble. Uh, verse 2 says, therefore, we're not going to fear. Right? Based on that, what we know about how God has been so well proved, we are not going to fear today. Uh, we're not going to fear, though the earth gives way. Right? Though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, Though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. So there, that verse 2, then verse 3, that's kind of this picture of turmoil, picture of uh, chaos. Like a lot of things seem like they're out of control. We got mountains slipping into the sea. We got waters roaring and we got waters foaming. Uh, we, we, we're living this today in a lot of different ways. Uh, I mean, remember like this will pass, like all of this uh, unknown, and a lot of the fear that's going around, these things, they, this will pass with time, but we're really kind of living that right now, and if you don't believe it, just think about, when you walk into the grocery store, and you just see empty shelves, and you know, folks are walking around with a lot of fear, fear of the unknown, uh, uh, we got social media coming at us constantly, you turn on the news, and it's nothing but coronavirus all the time, so I really love thinking about these first three verses of this psalm and teaching them backwards. I like starting with verse three and then going to verse two and then ending with verse one. So let's, let's do that. Verse three. Again, what do we got going on? We got a picture of things that just kind of feel and seem like they're out of control. We got waters just roaring and foaming. We got things in verse two, uh, great things that are just kind of being rocked. <laughs> your schedules, your plans, even your health. Things are getting rocked. Uh, it feels that way so much. Uh, but verse 2 says we're not going to fear. Even in the midst of all of that stuff, we're not going to fear. Verse 1, why? We're not going to fear because as we move up to verse 1, we know that God is our refuge and our strength. He really is a well-proved help. Well-proved help in times of trouble. So I would just encourage you to just reflect for a minute on both your past and your present. What are those things that God has shown you? Those things that God has shown you in the ways that he has absolutely been a refuge for you. The way that God has absolutely been a strength for you in the past. So we want to soak on those things. Verse 4 uh, through verse 7. It's this beautiful picture of how uh, in the midst of all of that, God, he's with us. God's with us. Verse 4. It says, there's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. This uh, river that's being described here in verse 4 is really, really different. That the, These waters flowing in verse 4 are very different than the waters that are roaring and foaming in verse 3. This is really, a, you kind of look in the details of this, it's really not an uncontrolled river. It is a, a planned channel. It's a channel of water that is bringing uh, streams of life into the city of God. It's a river that's bringing streams of life to the people of God. That's the picture in verse 4 of like our God 
He meets our, he meets our needs, right? He is our provider for all things. And then verse 5, not only that, we have his provision, but we also have his presence with us. Verse 5, God's in the midst of her, it says. She will not be moved. God will help. God will help her when the morning dawns. God's present with his people. Right here is this picture in the city of Zion. God is there. He's present. And then last, God is there in power as well. Verse uh, 6 and 7 says the nations rage. Uh, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice and the earth, it melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Like again, like just think back. Be reminded uh, just moment by moment of not just the provision of God for you, for me, uh, the, the presence of God in our lives, the power of God. Uh, over and over again, we see here, our God, he's with us, even though things are roaring and foaming, right? Even though it seems like the mountains are moving, uh, our God is with us. And then this last part, verse 8 through 11, is uh, God will be exalted through all of it. Check it out. Verse 8 it says, come behold the works of the Lord, how he has wrought has brought desolations on the earth. He makes the wars to cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and he shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. What's going on in verse eight and nine? We got this picture here. It's like, come and see. Like, come and see what our warrior God, come and see what our defender, right? our strong tower, see what it is that he is doing. Right? I know there's a lot going on. And I know that a lot of things are changing, but in the midst of all of that, come and see what our God has done. Verse 10 is really, I think, the, the, the peak of this whole psalm. It's this. It says, be still. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Uh, some translations uh, that you have might say, um, cease striving and know that I am God. Now, this doesn't mean, you know, be still, like, don't, just don't do anything. Uh, it doesn't mean just put your feet up on the couch because we're still going to go to work, of course. We've got work to do. We've got families to care for. We've got trying to figure out what we're doing with our kids' schedules. They're at home from school for a while. How are we going to manage that? How are we going to manage all of their education, our jobs? Like, what's all this looking like? So this idea of be still or this idea of, um, uh, you know, cease striving, it's really like what's going on in, the, in, the, in, the, in your mind and in your heart. What are we being consumed with? Are we still? Are we still or are we striving, right, when it comes to how we view and we think about God and what he's doing? Uh, verse 10, be still in your heart and in your mind and know. Know that I am God. So if you just remind yourself, like how do we do that? If you just remind yourself, uh, what are the things that I know to be true of God? If I'm going to be still and if I'm going to know him, I'm going to rest in him in the midst of everything that's happening. Uh, I got to remind myself almost regularly of who my God is, like the very attributes of God, the character of God, uh, the quality of God. Uh, he's present. He's powerful. He sees everything that I'm facing. Like he knows. Like none of this is a surprise to God at all. It's not a surprise to him. So I can rest. I can be still and I can know that he is God goes on and it says, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So what I would encourage you to do uh, is, uh, as, we, as we kind of wrap this up, as we get to the end of this uh, video this morning, I would encourage you to uh, take some time and go through, maybe it's just you one-on-one -on -one with the Lord, or maybe you've got your family that you want to gather around you, or maybe even you're doing this with your life group this morning and you want to gather your life group in. Uh, what I would encourage you to do is take this psalm in these three parts and work through it uh, one step at a time and reflect in each section. This first part, God's our refuge, verse 1 through 3. Uh, together, like talk this through uh, with your family, perhaps with your kids, or your life group, uh, what are those moments in your past or even right now in your present, and you can describe the ways that God has been your refuge. Describe the ways that God really has been a strength for you uh, in these days. And then just take some time together and pray. Pray and thank God. Uh, and you could just simply say, Lord, um, I have found help from you 
uh, in my, and then fill in the blank. You just kind of go around the room and share it. Uh, God, I have found help from you in this. Like, let's identify. Like, what are those things? Let's be encouraged by it as we pray together. And then second, I would look through those verses 4 through 7 again. And when you get there, this idea of God being with us, again, I would say reflect, how has God been my provision in the past? Um, how has God been, uh, I, I've just known his presence with me just so clearly in these moments. And how is it that you've really seen the power of God at work? Maybe changing you, maybe changing circumstances, maybe changing others. And you say, God, thank you. Right? Just take this as a time to pray. Right here in this section, like, just pray, God, thank you for your provision. God, thank you for your presence with me. I don't have to fear. God, thank you for your power over all that we face. And then as we move to that last part, verse 8 through 11, uh, I would just, again, like consider, like identify, where is it that you're having the hardest time to be still? Like to literally just still your mind and still your heart. Now, can you just like, simply identify uh, what is it that's giving you the most, uh, perhaps it's fear, what is it that's giving you perhaps the most anxiety as you're considering the days that we're in? Uh, simply identify it. Where is it the most difficult to be still? And then um, I would then ask you simply, mull over, right, and, and share with one another uh, these truths that we know about God. You can even simply go around the room and say, okay, what's true of God? What's true of him in this situation? What is true of him in that situation? Our God never, ever changes. So take courage and take hope as we be still and as we know uh, who our God is. Right? Pray. And just take a moment. Just pray and ask the Lord to be your stronghold today. Ask him to be your stronghold in the days, of, days ahead. May really the, the, the striving of your heart, uh, may you and I, as we pray, we would turn those specific struggles uh, and the striving of our heart, we turn those things over to the Lord in prayer. So do that together as a family. I pray that you just really would be encouraged by it. This Psalm 46, just a wonderful, it's just a beautiful, I think helpful psalm for us all. Uh, right now in the days that we're facing. So uh, I just want to take another moment and let's talk about some of the opportunities that we have uh, as we uh, consider these next few weeks. Um, again, like let's remember, like none of this is a surprise to God. This is all hitting us a little bit fast, but man, this is no surprise to God. And so as we uh, just carefully consider what is it that the Lord would have us to do in these days, like I would just say, church, there are great opportunities ahead for us. The kingdom of God is advancing, not retreating. We as a church want to advance and not retreat here in these days. So, uh, you know, we're so used to being the church that gathers here Sunday by Sunday. We come together, we gather, but what we got going on right now is we're not doing that regular gathering just for a few weeks here. So what are we doing? We really have a greater opportunity to be the church, not in here, but be the church out there. So how can we proactively take steps? take advantage of these opportunities that the Lord has put before us. I have just five things for us to consider today. What can we do together in order to advance the kingdom of God? Uh, what can we do together to take advantage of opportunities? And so number one, I would say invite. Invite. What do I mean by that? Uh, what I mean is um, our Easter series, it's called Rescue, is going to be starting next Sunday, March 22nd. And uh, I'm really excited about bringing that to you. It's going to come to you by video. So when I say invite, here's what I want to encourage you to do. I want to encourage you to invite, perhaps it's a friend, perhaps it's a coworker, a neighbor that lives near you, and in invite them to become, uh, be a part of this with us. Uh, invite them to your home. This might be someone who they don't have a church home themselves. You know, they might not really ever consider much going to Grace Point or going to any church, but they would come to your house. Maybe they come over on Sunday uh, through this Easter series and have a meal with you. Uh, invite them to be a part of this rescue series that we're doing together. If it's something that you care about and that you want to share with them, uh, I would encourage you to take the opportunity and engage them in what we're doing together. Um, this is something new for you. Like You're not used to doing this at home either. And so as it's brand new for you, invite them in because it could be brand new for them as well. So uh, where can you extend an invitation? Where can you extend an invitation to a friend or a neighbor or somebody that you're getting to know? Like, let's, in, let's take this opportunity to invite. And then second, I would say, let's take the uh, opportunity to serve. 
uh, to serve. But we're going to um, really have some, I think, unique opportunities to serve our community and our neighbors uh, in these times that we're the times that we're in. Uh, I think there's uh, folks in our city uh, that are uh, hurting. I think there's some folks in our city that are really, as I said, facing uh, quite a bit of fear and facing the unknown. And so we can enter into that and really seek to meet some very specific and, I think, practical needs. Uh, so what we're in the process of doing right now is we're in the process of talking to some of our city leaders. We're in the process of talking to our school leaders, um, our friends, and our neighbors, just to really try to determine what are some very practical ways that we as a church could engage and uh, meet some needs in our community. Um, so our next steps on that is... In the next couple of days, we're going to be ready to share with you, church family, what are some of those uh, practical things that we can together engage in. Um, so, st so stay tuned on that. I'm kind of, as we're building our plans, uh, working on those details, we're going to be bringing those to you. But then a second, even in all of that, just remember, like, Grace Point is me, and Grace Point is you, and we, Grace Point, we're spread all over this county. It's where we work. It's where we live. And so each of us individually can be looking for what are the just simple ways that I can enter in and meet a need. Uh, am I willing to share? Am I willing to uh, extend hope and love and service uh, as it's needed, as the Lord brings it to me? So uh, Grace Point, we are everywhere. Uh, we're spread out. And so church, let's be the church in this time. Uh, so number one, invite. Number two, we can take the opportunity to serve. And then number three, uh, we can take the opportunity to pray. Uh, this is a time when we need to pray. Um, just yesterday, uh, our president uh, uh, declared today, Sunday, March 15th, as a national day of prayer. And so we want to be a part of that. So uh, today, uh, our church auditorium is going to be open for you uh, between the hours of noon and three. And so we just want to invite you, if you're, if you're uh, willing and able, to come on in and just use this as a time to pray. You can come in and slip in and pray individually. We could be praying in some small groups together. There's nothing programmed. It's not going to be a, a service, but the church is just going to be open and available for us as God's people to gather here uh, and to pray. You can pray at home. I mean, God hears our prayers no matter where we are, but the church is going to be available for you Sunday, uh, today, between the hours of noon and three. So also, I'll just say, we're going to have other times when we want to open up this place for gathering and for prayer uh, these next few weeks. And so uh, stay tuned on that. We'll let you know uh, through announcements about when we're going to gather uh, and open up the church building for opportunities to pray. So we'll be sharing that with you in the days, in the days ahead. Be a part of our communication every week. Okay? So number one, how can we take advantage of the opportunities that God has put before us in order to expand his kingdom? Well, like number one, we're going to invite our friends and neighbors like to engage uh, in the work that he's doing. We're going to be able to serve together. We're going to be sure and pray together. And then uh, fourth, we want to be sure and connect together. Connect. Now, I'm kind of thinking about this idea, you know, coming off of this fit series that we've just done. Like I would just say, church, for the past eight weeks, we've been preparing. We have been preparing for this moment. For eight weeks, we have been digging into these disciplines, uh, training, right, for these things like uh, now more than ever, right? We need to spend the time of taking a break from the news and taking a break from the social media and getting our Bibles open. Like now more than ever, we need to get God's word in front of us and pour into it. Like now more than ever, we need to be uh, investing in prayer, prayer individually, prayer with one another. You know, now more than ever, right, we need to exercise these disciplines of serving our friends and our neighbors. And I would say now more than ever, it's a time to connect. Now more than ever, it's a time to connect with one another. I just say, um, believe me, the irony has not been uh, missed on me. Uh, this call that we've been working on so hard, this uh, our vision for the new year, which is to be a church of disciples, making disciples through intentional relationships. And the word of the day is, is uh, have you noticed it? It's social distancing, right? Social distancing. It almost feels the opposite of what we've been working at, which is investing in intentional relationships. So hear me, like we need to be careful and we need to be safe uh, with this virus going around, but still that does not mean that we're not going to invest, right? And take the opportunity to invest in relationship with one another. So how can we do this? Uh, stay connected with one another, church. Uh, reach out to one another. Pick up the phone. Like call. Let's check in with one another and let's see how each other are doing. Are there any specific ways that we can meet needs with one another right here in our church family? Um, 
Keep contact with one another. Maybe it's through your life groups. And keep contact with us right here at the office. I think a simple way that you can connect with us is uh, an email. Like, let us know. It's prayer at gracepointefc.org. Prayer at gracepointefc.org. Let us know. How can we be praying for you? Do you have any specific needs that we need to know about? Like, just share with us so we can love and connect one another well in these days, all right? So number one, we're going to invite. Number two, we're going to serve together. Number three, we're going to pray. Four, connect. And then last, uh, we want to be sure, and now is the time to give. We want to be sure and give um, as the Lord uh, puts it on our hearts. You know, as always, giving, it is an act of worship. As always, giving is an act of faith. So, uh, you know, we're not going to have that regular opportunity as we gather Sunday by Sunday to, um, to give an offering. And so uh, now might be the perfect time for you to consider, is this the time to switch over to online giving? Uh, might that be a help for you? It would be a help for us. So we have some ways that you can give. We have a slide about that that will point you to various ways that you could uh, continue to give. You know, I just would want to say ministry uh, doesn't stop. Uh, at all. In fact, as we think about these new and unique opportunities that the Lord is giving to us right now, uh, as we think about these different ways to do ministry, uh, not only here, but also in our larger community around us, the, the, I think the need for resources is only greater. So church, uh, let's continue to uh, remain faithful in our giving. So, uh, so uh, church, I just love you. I love this opportunity to come right into your home and uh, share the word with you today. Psalm 46, what a wonderful psalm for today. So just be encouraged, church. Walk through that psalm together. Come back to it perhaps every day this week, right? And be reminded of the truths of God's word. And uh, praise God, we have an opportunity before us. Uh, we're gonna do, as I said yesterday, we're gonna do what the church has always done. We're going to be at the work of expanding the kingdom of God uh, through the work of God. May we be just salt and light and hope in our community in this time. All right, I love you. I'll be talking to you soon. Praise God.